Mr. President, um, I'm pleased to join my colleagues on the floor today, the members of the Appropriations Committee and others who have been down to speak in support of passing this continuing resolution. Um, I'm a new member of the Appropriations Committee, and uh, I've been very impressed with the work that our chair, Senator Mikulski, and Ranking Member Shelby have done. They have uh, crafted the appropriations bills um, that would um, really address the budget for the coming year. Um, those appropriations bills would replace the harmful cuts from sequestration. Those are cuts that people on both sides of the aisle have said they have posed. Um, but unfortunately, because of the obstructionism we've seen so clearly this week, um, those bills haven't yet come to the floor. And so we need a short-term CR to keep the government open. Now, we all know that the continuing resolution that's before us today is not ideal. It's short-term, and it doesn't replace sequestration. So it doesn't either deal with the cuts or give businesses and our economy the certainty that they need. But this suggestion that we should refuse to keep the government open um, is just irresponsible. There is just too much at stake for our economy, for our small business, for our families across this country. Um, and unfortunately, what we've seen this week is that there are some who are pushing this country to the brink of another manufactured crisis as a tactic to prevent health care reform from going into effect. Now, I, I'm not going to review what Senator McCain said, I think, so well about how the democratic process works in this country, um, about the fact that once a law uh, goes into effect that it's important to implement it. And, you know, I think democracy works, but it doesn't always work the way I want it to either. But when a law is passed, we have a responsibility to go ahead and make it work. And we've seen a small minority of this body and of the House who are willing to shut down government to defund the new health care law. Now, the people I talk to in New Hampshire don't think that shutting down government is a good approach uh, because they understand the serious consequences it would have for them, for their businesses, and for the country. It would especially hurt small businesses, which are the foundation of the economy in New Hampshire and the presiding officer's home state of Maine and Rhode Island, um, Senator Reid's home state. Um, those small businesses create two out of every three new jobs. And many of those small businesses in New Hampshire and across the country rely on federal contracts as they figure out how they're going to grow and create new jobs. We talked to one uh, CEO of an innovative small company in New Hampshire who told me if its contracts were shut down, and I quote, he said, our income would drop to essentially zero. We would burn our very thin cash reserves, and when that money is burned, it is not able to be replaced. So our basic financial viability can be irrevocably damaged, even after the crisis passes. There will be no way to recover those dollars. Now, we had a chance to hear from former Secretary of the Treasury, Bob Rubin, this week, who said that unlike 1995, when there was a short-term consequence to shutting down the government, that if we do that this time, it will be felt not just for years, but for decades to come. A shutdown would close the Small Business Administration's lending programs, and those SBA lending programs are critical to small business in New Hampshire. Um, and across this country, on average, SBA supports loans to over 1,000 small businesses per week. Um, and then there's the housing market. In New Hampshire and across this country, the housing market has been one of the slowest sectors to recover. But in the last year, we've begun to see some signs of improvement. The Federal Housing Administration has been a big part of that recovery because they've helped families afford homes and kept our housing economy afloat. Under the shutdown, it's estimated that assistance to 34,000 homeowners would be delayed. And with all of the problems that have been caused by the housing crisis, we should not be stalling one of the most effective programs we have for assisting homeowners. And that's what we would do with a government shutdown. And then, of course, this would be terrible timing for the tourism industry in New Hampshire and across New England, because fall foliage is one of our big, 
biggest seasons, and tourists come from all over the world. They spend money in our local restaurants and hotels. Um, many small businesses rely on this time of year to increase their revenues. But if the government shuts down, we'll be turning away those customers. Applications for visas will come to a halt. And according to the Congressional Research Service, during the 1995-96 shutdowns, approximately 20 to 30,000 applications by foreigners for visas to come and visit in America went unprocessed. That's going to affect not just the tourism industries in New Hampshire, it's going to affect airlines, it's going to affect people across the country. And then, of course, there are our federal workers. In New Hampshire, there are 7,400 of them. Um, it's one of the state's largest employers, the federal government. And their salaries aren't just important to them and their families, but to the grocery stores and the gas stations and um, all of the other businesses they support. And the presiding officer certainly knows with me about the impact on the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard of a potential government shutdown. So these are just some of the effects on the economy. And considering the many industries that would be affected, it's no surprise that economists have forecast that failure to pass a continuing resolution, as Bob Rubin said, would do significant damage to our economy. Even a three or four day shutdown could slow growth by 0.2 percent, according to economist Mark Zandi. And you know, it doesn't have to be this way. I was a governor for three terms. The presiding officer was a governor for two terms. Um, we understood what it was like to work across the aisle. And we always passed a budget because we had to put in place a budget. There are Remaining. Thank you. There are a lot of differences um, on both sides of the aisle, but we understood the importance of compromising because it would have been impossible to get something through the New Hampshire legislature and get a budget to my desk if people hadn't been willing to compromise if they'd been continuing to play the kinds of political games that we're seeing here in Washington. It's unacceptable. Congress can do better. We need to work together. We need to work together to pass this continuing resolution and then to raise the debt ceiling later this year so we avoid the negative effect to families, to businesses, and to our economy. Thank you very much, Mr. President.